Jim Denovan's work is monumental in scale, but as fleeting as any live performance. For the past 10 years, Jim has been transforming the beaches of Northern California, turning them into vast canvases for his ephemeral works of art. When I'm doing a drawing, I'm first finding the place that is empty, the place that is unmarked. Ocean Beach is uh, very unusual. The composition of the sand, the combination of light sand and dark sand. And also the, all the available drawing space, which was pretty much the entire visible area of sand. I like for a stick that it's, uh, it has a good grip. I do form a relationship with the stick. And I choose the stick. It's kind of, I like this, I like the heavy, heavy stick. It's like, a, it's like a ah, dance partner. Huh. Yeah, it's just too blunt. It's too short. The motion of taking the stick and leaving that central point and curving, it's very profound because I have to embody the beginning, the middle, and the end in the entire motion. Artists in the 1960s took art outside the four walls of the gallery space and into the unpredictable realm of the natural environment. Like those land art pioneers, Jim considers process an integral part of his artwork. In his mind, every step is a kind of temporary sculpture. As I'm moving, there's a lot of rhythm that's going through my mind. Drawing in the sand, the oceans, the music, and the footsteps of the rhythm. Dance and music, that's is the essential ingredients. The movement of the of my body across the sand. Yeah, I live I live to dance. My my movement has a present, and then where I want to be, that's the future. And when it's, when it's begun, when it moves, when I move, then the line has a past. The beach has been Jim's sanctuary for as long as he can remember. When he was five, Jim's father died of a brain tumor, leaving his mother, an accomplished mathematician, to raise nine children alone. Three of Jim's brothers were schizophrenic. Another died when Jim was a teenager. I had and still have an intense, painful place. I wanted to survive. I wanted to, uh, wanted to live and thrive. And, and the ocean's a very, it's a, it's a very challenging environment. Everyone has the, that thing that they need. And some people will find it through prayer or they'll place themselves in a church or a cathedral or they'll align themselves towards the um, altar. The ocean's good for that. My mother became ill with Alzheimer's and uh, I I did a lot of drawing in the sand. The motions of making the drawings, it seemed the best thing to do since I could not bring back her mental health. Composing in the sand, moving till the tide changed is the thing that I did. It was Jim's passion for surfing that led to his vision of the beach as a blank canvas and to the secrets of drawing so precisely on such a large scale. If you surf a place long enough, you start to find that there's a very uh, narrow zone where you're going to be much, most successful. That's what's known as the lineup. 
pick a tree or a chimney or a few objects in the distance and line them up. I'm walking a line from, from where I can see from my eye to the point in the distance and the other line goes to the, up to a point just past the tree, furthest tree. Jim moved to Santa Cruz when he was 15 to be closer to the beach. He still lives at the edge of the ocean in a cottage with his son and works as a chef to support his art. I'm drawn to the beach. I love that we're drawn, I know the whole idea of people being drawn in or I have a variety of tools which I bring to the beach. This particular tool is used to remove footprints. Here's an average rake here. Just common leaf rake, 14 bucks. Yeah, I put two of them together and I made it very strong. I, I went about five or 6,000 miles with one rake and it snapped. This one's nice and tough. It's not gonna break. Got a few thousand miles to go. Every single line points to the center. In a journey of 20 miles, 25 miles, over the four or five or six hours of walking, each and every line will move towards the center and also move away from the center. And the spiral is a logarithmic spiral that it's expanding. Jim's spiral is a design that commonly occurs in nature from the shape of a seashell to the arrangement of stars in the Milky Way. It's a visual representation of the Fibonacci sequence, a sequence of numbers in which each number is the sum of the previous two numbers. My mother did her master's thesis on, the, on Fibonacci numbers. I remember her having incredible passion for mathematics. I actually think it's much more beautiful for it to only exist for a short moment. When you fall in love, the intensity of it doesn't last very long. That love is, uh, is temporary. There's, there's beautiful things that are very, very fleeting. And when I walk away, other people enter the drawing, they come upon it and don't know who's made it. Um, and then I climb the tall cliff. I look down at the drawing as a, um, I'm a spectator. I see the drawing in its entirety. It exists complete. And then a wave comes in and slowly it's gone. The tide comes in and it's gone. <laughs> 